What is an odd behavior of yours you think only you do? I have noticed I often sniff when I enter a room, so I don't scare people by just talking out of nowhere. Your friends probably think you've got a crippling cocaine habit. Plot twist, that's the actual reason. In the shower, I slowly rotate to keep myself evenly warm. I do it unconsciously now, like a rotisserie chicken. I'm ashamed to admit that both my husband and I do this, and we have a theme tune for it. It's the word rotisserie sang to the tune of Oh Christmas Tree followed by made up rhymes. I have hyperhidrosis, fancy word for sweating a lot, and my t-shirts are constantly sticking to my armpits. To you and stick them, I just lift my elbows up and down a time or three. Basically, I flap my arms like a chicken. Most of the time, I don't even realize I'm doing it. Imagine having a conversation with someone you have never met, and they randomly start flapping like a chicken out of the blue and act like nothing just happened with no explanation. I'm dying at this image. I love it. It's poultry in motion. I throw up gang signs at my dog. Don't know why it started, but I get a laugh out of it, and my dog just likes the attention. I sing with my cat, and he responds when I pause. Somebody once told me the world is gonna. Meow. I ain't the sharpest tool in the. Meow. I find it hilarious he also likes the attention. This is delightful. I walk fast. When it's a crowded place, I use hand gestures, whenever another person gets in my way, to tell them where I will go, like I point to the left and they automatically move to the right without any awkwardness. It works more often than I expected, people tend to follow such unexpected gestures unconsciously. Humans need blinker lights. Hopefully they add in V2. A nobody would use them. I rub the tip of my nose, and after a while it starts to feel really nice and I get a mild sensation not unlike an orgasm. So now I've been rubbing my nose for longer than I'd like to admit. Yeah me too. Nothing happening though. Shake my butt when I'm lying in bed. Hey you should meet my roommate. I wake up every morning to him just fast asleep, but vigorously shaking his butt. What the cinnamon toast frick. Does he realize he does this? When at the library or bookstore, I sometime open a book I know I will read at some point, but not right now, and read a random line at a random page. Then, maybe years later I will read the book, and when I get to that line, that I have forgotten all about, and get the most powerful feeling of deja vu, I will remember what the world felt like, smelt like, the sensations and feelings I had, while reading that line. It's like like little gifts of memories to future me floating around in various books. That's beautiful, as someone who gets a lot of deja vu, I want to try this. Same, this sounds awesome. I tap every time a dashed line goes past the car. It's like a perpetual game of Guitar Hero. Yay but do you use the invisible saw extending from your finger to cut down telephone poles when you're in the passenger seat? Mine's a laser beam. I make a valley out of pillows and blankets and sleep in the middle, so I can koala hug something, while laying on either side. I call it building a nest but same idea, it's the most amazing way to sleep. I miss my nest when I travel. I need a heavy pillow at the foot of my bed every time I travel, to simulate the 15 pound cat that's usually there. I wiggle my right foot really fast, when I'm falling asleep. I once slept next to a guy that did this, while I was already asleep, it woke me up. I thought he was jerking off next to me, it was really disturbing. But then I quickly explained that I was just wiggling my foot. Which obviously I was there's no reason for you not to accept that explanation, because it's true. It's so silly that we are even talking about this. Really, this is boring, let's just change the subject. Sometimes when I get bored, I explain modern things to Benjamin Franklin. Music I listen to, or how my phone works, etc. Sometimes I go even further back and explain it to Socrates or a caveman. Sometimes it's philosophical, sometimes it's just stupid. I don't know why I do it, but it's very entertaining. I used to do something like that on car trips, only I'd pick a time period and imagine what a philosopher, monk or otherwise educated person from that era would be able to figure out about what I was seeing. Yeah the game is usually all of the stuff that precipitates from. Explaining the first thing. 
like to explain how my phone works, I have to explain what a screen is, photography, television, etc. I have to explain sending information through the air, like radio, and then space travel, satellites, etc. I try to work out what kind of explanation would be understood pretty easily, and what would require further explanation. Sometimes I wonder if there's actually people who can see into your mind, so I start thinking about really interesting things so if there is, they won't think I'm boring. I scream as loud as I can, mentally, and think of really fricked up crap. If they look uncomfortable after that, I then know that they can. I'll sometimes do the Homer Simpson bit. I know you can read my thoughts boy, meow 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 meow, and if there's no reaction I feel safe haha. I make sure to make a splash noise when I pee to make sure I'm not sleeping and pissing the bed. Has it ever saved your bed from smelling like pee? That's the hard part, I haven't mad my bed since I started it, but correlation does not equal causation. Sometimes when I'm listening to music I play a game where I tap my fingers to the syllables, if the sentence ends at the pinky or the thumb I win, if not I must continue until it ends up at one of them. I also do this, but completely randomly using random words, it doesn't have to be a song. I did this to your comment and lost. Habit that I've had since childhood, I play with my ears, especially when they are cold, I fold them, and scrunch them, and can fit them into the ear canal until they unfold, and pop back into form. Finally one that I can relate to, my comrades. I always wonder, if people think it's weird, but meh. Side note, cold cat ears are the best, as a dog's long ears. Sometimes I spell a word in my head over and over until it seems like nonsense. I'll occasionally reread sections of a book where nothing much happens, but the characters are just chilling, it's almost like visiting friends. One of my favorite parts in all of the Harry Potter series is when Harry gets two weeks alone in Diagon Alley in Prisoner. Nothing happens, just wish I could experience that myself. That's my major complaint about especially the later books. I just love the wizarding world and want to have more slice of life in it. Just descriptions of the shops, the classes and breaks at Hogwarts, the interactions between full family wizards and muggle-borns etc. In the later books it's all just drama and I just want peace. Using random number generator apps to dictate how I set my daily to-do lists. When I can't decide between two things I assign them random numbers, like 68 and 14, or call them left and right, and have someone pick one over the other. Whatever they choose I go for that thing. When I'm alone I use an RNG or coin instead. So not exactly, but same idea I suppose. I also do this, but if I find myself disappointed in the outcome, then I do the opposite. It's more like uncovering my true desire than truly randomizing. My alarm is set to 7am. I can't remember when I last had it go off because I wake up at around 6.15 and spend some time on my phone before unsetting my alarm and getting in the shower before 7am. My alarm is set to 7am, I can't remember when I last heard it go off because I wake up at around 7.30 in the afternoon. It kinda weird, but I like to rub my feet against each other under the covers. It calms me down and helps me fall asleep. I do this, but unconsciously. I make weird noises and gestures when I think no one else is home. Do you also check if there are no webcam after a while when it's too weird? In my own home, with my wife never having mentioned wanting one ever, yes I still go frick someone's watching aren't they? I have to blink an even number of times and most of the time that's not enough. I have to stop what I'm doing to keep on blinking until my mind is pleased with the right amount of even times I've blinked. Sounds like hell. There are times I wanna freak the frick out, because I just wanna stop but never do. I hear noises in multiples of 8. Not that I hear any sound 8 times, but if there's a noise that repeats a bunch of times, I hear it in my head again and count it, using 8s. Are you a musician? Being stuck in 4 over 4 times so often, it would make sense. Wow, you guys, I never thought of it as being 4 over 4 time, but it probably is. Now I feel dumb, lol. I did use to write music, and I have years of piano and voice training, so yeah. Huh. I say things to myself to break a train on thought. 
like I love you, or I'm sorry, or you got this, just to keep myself going on the right path. Probably be weird if someone walked in on me trying to motivate myself out loud. Positive affirmations. Good work, it's important to be nice to yourself. In my head I make a plan to rob any business I enter. I make note of security, cameras, employees. I think about what part of town I'm in and try to estimate what the police response time would be and possible escape routes and so on. I'd never do it of course. It's just a mental exercise. I made the mistake of telling my wife about it and now when we go out she notices and tracks my eyes and says stop that. You're so weird. Lol. I'm gonna steal this one. Have a plan first. I got my dog Snoopy when I was 10 years and ever since he was a puppy he had this weird love for lettuce. He would go absolutely nuts for it and so whenever I had a sandwich or a burger I would give him some of my lettuce. Over the years it became a ritual that whenever I prepared any food that involved lettuce for myself I would grab extra lettuce for him so I could toss it to him as I ate. He passed away 4 years ago after almost 17 years together, but I still find myself grabbing that bit of extra lettuce for him. I feel like I'm probably the only person in the world that grabs more lettuce than they need for something and then eat it while remembering his best friend that passed. Same here, I had a dog also that was nightmare. Ever since the start of my high school, he had this weird thing for flashlights. Whenever I want to use the flashlight he just runs around and it's like seeing a cat with a laser. And I was so used to flinging the flashlight anywhere whenever I'm bored and nightmare would chase it. It's been 3 years since he passed. I still have that habit of flinging a flashlight around. I thought you were saying your dog was a nightmare until I realized you named him nightmare. After I stopped chewing on my nails I needed a new thing for when I'm nervous, preferably something discreet. So I started pressing my nails into the side of my knuckles and then kind of pressing the hurting spot. Somehow this pain feels extremely relaxing for me. Also it helps me think when I can't concentrate. I've moved to biting the skin around my fingers. It's kind of the same thing. It hurts but like a good hurt. That turned into full blown dermatophagia for me. Every knuckle and the skin doing down my index finger were completely torn apart. My hands looked horrifying. Thankfully. A few years back I forced myself to stop and heal. When my girlfriend gets home, I often pretend to be dead. She then feigns shock and horror until I ultimately succumb to a fit of laughter. I try and be as inventive as possible with positioning and stuff, and I'm well aware that I could become the man who cried wolf one day. Just mix it up with other pranks. True moral of that story is that you should never tell the same lie twice, after all. Tell me, Garrick, are you really just a simple teller? Or is that another one of your lies? I give objects a chizak or I scratch it for them because they look itchy. I like that. When I'm watching a movie or TV series and something bad happens to a character I really like I can't handle him being sad or distraught. So I stop watching it. It's a real problem I have to force myself to continue. Because if I wouldn't I wouldn't watch anything until the end. It's been like this since I was a kid. I can't watch sitcoms or other awkward drama shows. I put myself in the show not as a character. Just like I'm watching it happen I roll or something. I'm firmly aware it's a show and that I'm not there and it's not here and I can't stand those awkward moments. And most sitcoms are built around that. I'm very picky about what I watch lol. Not the same as yours, but it feels like a cousin to it somehow. Colon close bracket. Ugh me too I cannot stand cringe humor because it just makes me so overwhelmingly uncomfortable. I get weird compulsions that I need to touch between my pinky fingers or touch my armpit. It's more like a tickling sensation that builds until I have to relieve it by touching it. I have no idea what causes this and I haven't heard of anyone else that has to do this. Maybe some form of mild OCD. I knew a girl with Tourette's that described this, but instead of touching to relieve the sensation she had to hit it. She was just constantly hitting herself. Yikes. That is kind of sad. When a page is taking a long time to load on my laptop I rotate my index finger clockwise and it makes me feel like it makes the page load faster. When I wake up for work 
Sometimes I have the good chills about certain things. Like the account console in my car might look like a cockpit, and it sends good chills down my spine. It's like the time before I have to be at work is a cozy little mini time. There is no way in hell I can explain this in words. I have always called it the morning weird. Man I hope there is someone else out there that knows what I'm talking about. Yep, I get them, usually as I get my day going, and especially if there's something cozy about my drive-in to work that strikes me like when I get a really good podcast and I have my coffee and suddenly I take it all in, and it's like a tiny little joygasm that gives me a shivery boost, lol imagine being this happy. I have conversations with myself out loud, and I stare intently at one spot when I'm thinking. I also talk with inanimate objects. And I catch myself cocking my head to the side like a dog when I'm confused. Of note, they don't talk back to me. I just have one-sided conversations with the objects. Kind of like how Archer talks to Creature in Creature's first few appearances before they found a voice actor for him. A boss once told me this is a sign of a healthy mind. I do it a lot and always assume the opposite. My dog and I have arguments when he barks. He will hear someone in a hallway outside and start barking every time. I tell him SHHHH and he barks again slightly less loudly this time. This continues until I can barely hear him, but he has to get the last word in. Drives me up the wall. I do the same with my cat. We have full on conversations and arguments. Every time I shift into neutral, I wiggle the stick back and forth a bit as a sanity check. That's good a good habit to ensure you're not accidentally in gear, and it's a good fidgety thing to do at lights. If I'm a passenger on a long car journey I pretend there's a running man at the side of the road who can't touch the ground, and I imagine it in full detail jumps to that tree, somersaults down and runs along the barrier, jumps, pushes off the stop sign, and onto the phone box and so on. It did that as a kid every time me and my family drove camping point, but my guy was on a skateboard doing tricks. Mine was on a dirt bike. I discreetly wave my right hand when I'm in front of sliding doors like a GD knight to open them. I also do this. Sometimes, if I'm feeling a little flamboyant, I snap my fingers at the door like I'm Fonzie. I try to time it so I can almost convince myself that it's an actual power. You first. I count the toilet paper squares, ensuring there's exactly 4 or 8 before I tear it off to wipe. I usually tear 3. I guess this means we are enemies now. I spin in circles and think about things. But like, as an activity, I've spent an hour plus just spinning and thinking about things that don't matter on multiple occasions. In place. Yep. My hands being wet makes me angry. I'm not a confrontational slash aggressive person, but if my hands were wet and someone came at me, I'd be probably 4x more likely to be aggressive back at them. How about this one? I don't mind my hands being properly wet, peresi, but I get irritated with them feeling not properly dried, and hate only one of my hands being wet, or one being more wet than the other. I also can't stand them being even slightly sticky or feeling dirty, but if I have to plunge my hands in mud or something, I'm fine. Guess maybe I'm just an all or nothing person? I hold my breath when someone walks by in a confined space because I don't want to breath their essence in, idk. I do this, but only for smelly people or people I don't like. You will never find on my alarm clock time like 6.40 or 7.15. It will always be something like 6.38 or 7.14. I don't know why, 